everyone, do you need a routine that works for you to make sure those sinking funds are fully funded or that you're motivated and keep saving that money or paying off that debt? You don't want to miss it. I'm going to share with you right now all my savings challenges. Hey everyone, this is Laura from Lime and Joy, and today has got to be one of my favorite days. I love doing savings challenges. This is where I actually get to see all my hard work for the month paid off and put towards different things. So I do side hustles, I try to save money on grocery, with reverse grocery shopping, or cut back in this area or that area, and I take all that money and I put it into savings challenges. And that's where we are today. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. If you're brand new to this, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. And if you've been here a while, well, welcome back and I'm excited to kind of just go through these savings challenges and hopefully spark some more motivation. For those of you that don't know me, I am Laura with Lime and Joy. I'm a wife, a medical coder, and a mom of six, and I'm on a journey to become debt-free and break generational cycles of debt so the next generation can live and give like they were meant to. And so if that interests you and you help need motivation and budgeting, saving money, paying off debt, then you're in the right place. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button to be a part of the Lime and Joy community and hit the thumbs up so others can find this video with us and we can find motivation together. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to do my savings challenge book. We're going to do a 100 envelope savings challenge and I'm also going to do a roll the dice challenge for those. So you got low income, middle income, everywhere. Anybody can do it. That's what I love about going ahead and doing uh, savings challenges. You can make it custom fit you. Keep you motivated and uh, meet the goals that you need for your family or your lifestyle. So it doesn't really matter what kind of savings challenge book you get, just make sure it meets all of those factors. So for me and my family, I wanted one that fulfilled sports. I needed to make sure I could do one that stocks up on food. Another second emergency fund. If you do not have an emergency fund, please start there. I'm gonna go ahead and try to see if I can find you a free printable for an emergency fund if you haven't had one already. Um, because this is really where you need to start if you don't have one yet. I already have $1,000 in a high yield savings account making money for me at 5% you know, percent APY. And so make sure you also don't keep that $1,000 in cash and home, that's not safe or even interest in a regular bank devaluing and losing money. Make sure your money is making money for you and choose a high yield savings account. There's lots of them out there, Ally Bank, Wealthfront, um, there's even some like Capital One. For me, I really, really like um, Wealthfront, but I've also heard really good things about like SoFi and Ally, okay? So I'll put that link below. If you're looking for a high yield savings account, it has been safe, it's FDIC insured, it has a debit card, there's no crazy uh, uh, fees to open it or fees every month. So I've been really happy with it. You're gonna wanna go check that out. So after you got the thousand dollars, I'm now working on my second one because I've already had emergency this year I had to pull from, but it was really nice. I didn't have to go and pull from my high yield savings account. Then I do house maintenance because, you know, I mean, and reno, because things happen all the time. I'm telling you, I had replaced my dishwasher this year. And then car maintenance, I also have already used up a bunch this year as well because, you know, I don't know, the tire pops, the oil needs to be changed, you know, something's gonna go. So make sure you're preparing for that. I do have the this kind of like going for yearly bills. I'm hoping that I'll be able to have enough to pay some yearly bills and get that monthly cost of my bills down, freeing up more money every single month to do what I need to do with it. And then for vacation, this one it's not you know as big, but still as a family, we like to go to the lake or the beach or things here and there. And so I definitely am funding that. Gifts, these are for other people that I like to give gifts. I have a holiday fund for like Christmas and that kind of stuff. And I have a birthday fund for particular like my children's birthdays, but I like giving gifts to other people. I love giving gifts. So I, I create a fund for that. And then that's what I was talking about the holidays for everything else. So these things, things kept making me go back into debt. So definitely the holidays made me come go back into debt. Emergencies kept happening. House stuff kept happening. Car stuff kept happening. So even though I was on this debt payoff with Dave Ramsey about three years ago when I started, it was so slow because I would pay a little bit off with the snowball and then an emergency would happen. I would deplete my emergency. 
but then even more would happen and I wouldn't have enough. So instead of just having a giant, you know, emergency fund, you could do it that way. I found it much more motivating and it helped me kind of see where all my money was going by breaking it down and finding the motivation, the savings challenge to do it. So now let's go ahead and look at that. Now I will link a few below. I know that somebody had reached out to me that she tried to get this one and it wasn't available at the moment. I don't know if they're just restocking, but I'll put a few really good ones below so you can choose from one. But honestly, you can even just go to Pinterest and print off a few printables that are free savings challenges and you can go ahead and start using them today. Because all that I do is I apply a savings challenge to a category. So right here, if you see in the beginning, right, I have sports. Okay, and my first one, it, I just applied it to sports. So when this money is saved up, I needed it about uh, six or seven hundred dollars when I started the year, and so that's what I have done. And I also like to put in a tracker into that particular one saying, okay, this is where I want to get to. And then as I put money in it, then I will lower how much more I have to go. So this 500 isn't that I have 500, it's that I've already put 200 in it and I just used it for an event to pay for a sports season for one of my kiddos. And so I only have 500 more to go for what I know I'll use in a year. And that's kind of how I do these trackers to kind of break down where I am and how close to that long-term sinking goal I am. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's just start. We have $700 to work with here today. This is from all those side hustles that I did. And I'm excited to finally get to apply uh, it to my savings challenges. So let's go ahead and do that. First up we're going to do is the 24, 24 dollars, 24 times in 2024 for 576 dollars. So let's go ahead and grab a pencil here and I'm going to get one colored in real quick. So we did this one, this one, this one, and this one. So it is four of them. 24 times four, I believe is 96. Let's see. Yep, 96 it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab that out. We're going to do 20, 40, 60, 80. And then 95 and 6. Awesome. So I did just do a reevaluate evaluation too, and I do suggest that you do that. So about every six months, I like to go ahead and look at everything, see if my goals are met, if I'm short somewhere. And that's why I started these trackers to kind of be like, okay, I need to start at the beginning of the year and then kind of wipe it off and start over again. I use these, uh, let's see if I can find it, these like Vista Expo markers on here so that I can just wipe it off with some water after I'm done. So let's go ahead and put this in here. So 20, 40, uh, 60, 80, 90, yeah, five and six. Okay, and we're gonna actually, you know what? We're gonna actually round up because I do not want these odd numbers. We're just going to do 100. All right, so $100. And so because I started with 700 and I already paid for the engagement of the sports I wanted to do, instead of putting what I'm getting in here, because I can clearly count that, I just want to put how much I have left to do. So now I have 400 left to do before I've met my goal for the year. Now, if you don't know how much money you're going to need in a particular area, then you could do it the opposite way. You could set a goal of, you know, let's say $500 and just add it up as you go. But I know exactly how much I need because I've done it quite a few times and it's always about the same. So that's why I do it this way because I like to see all right, how close to that goal am I? You know, how much longer? Because once this is fully funded, then I can put more money to other things and then even more money to my debt and so on and so forth. All right, next up is to stock up. And let's see what the savings challenge is here. Okay, it is $40 is what I've chose to do and just filling in one of these. And I think we're just going to do, let's see, one or two. Let's do two of them today. Let's 
go ahead and fill in this one right here. Now for stocking up, this is because I would love and desired for a very long time to buy stuff like bulk meat and things like that from local vendors, just because I just love the whole thought of supporting one another and local business and things like that. So I'd like to buy like a whole cow or half a cow. I, I, there's eight of us, six kiddos. So even though two of mine are grown, one still lives at home and one doesn't, they eat, they come, they're here, their friends are here, people are here. And so having that kind of bought ahead of time. I think one, it can be healthier. And two, I think that it will save me money in the long run. So just like uh, you'll see in a minute, I do yearly bills. I like to try to figure out ways to save money at all costs, especially with the economy, you know, being a little more money than it used to be. All right. So I did two of them. I set the price at 40. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab 80. We got 20, 40, 60, and 80. And because it's brand new, you see right here, I want $2,000 to save up. Let's go ahead and we're going to start this off with today's date and $80. So now I have $1,920 left. All right. And I probably won't even use this till the end of the year, but there'd be no way that I would be able to just outright buy large amounts of food or even like go to Costco or something like that and stock up. So this way I feel like I can do that without going breaking the budget. In the past, before I was on this debt-free journey, I would have just gone to Costco and put it on the credit card or gone to Costco and spent the money and then had to not pay something else. And I am so done of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Instead, I'd rather be smart, plan ahead and get the goals that I want. So make sure that you're kind of making your categories, your long-term sinking funds to what you need for your, you know, self, think back about what tripped you up before and, or what do you not have and you desire to have your, you are in control. You can change what that is for you, your family. All right. So next is the emergency reserve. My second one, um, that I'm doing. So let's go ahead and see what I have done for that one. And as you can see, they're in order. I just put the envelopes in the order that I chose um, my different savings challenges. And I just wrote on the bottom, which they are assigned to. So next is candy crush. And this is just again for that extra emergency fund. So since I have one, it's not as high as a priority. Some other things, we're just going to color in one of these today. So I've said to each, each of these something different. Let's go ahead and color in this one right here. Okay, perfect. And let's color this in. We will go ahead, because we're starting this one off as well. Okay, so we'll do that date of 617. We're gonna do that $40, leaving $960 until we're all done. All right. Next up, we have house maintenance, a reno or disaster or whatever it has to pertain to the house. I'm in a renovation process. We do it all on our own because it's expensive and we like actually doing like that reno kind of stuff. Um, I'll try to put in if I have, I don't know if I actually took some, but if I did, I will put in some pictures here. There's a giant wall. My house is a little bit on the older side that separated the kitchen from the living room. We just ripped it all out. Moved the washer and dryer that was in the kitchen, believe it or not. And um, then we went ahead and put it out in the garage, made it look really nice. And now we're trying to kind of open up the whole area before we redo the entire uh, kitchen, living room area, floor, ceiling, everything. So, okay. The house maintenance is a big one. Why you do it? I'm sure they'll take up some stuff I will find along the way. So we're funding it, doing a little bit, funding a little, doing a little bit and kind of doing it that way. Uh, instead of just waiting, I like to kind of work on it slowly. All right, house, we're going to probably, let's do this 16 and the 16, I've actually multiplied it by five. So let's see, 16 times five, what do we got? Is 80. All right. Perfect. So we'll color this one in, then we'll get $80. All right. 
right there we are with that one. Another 20, 40, 60, and 80. Now I can't remember if I've already said this or not, um, but uh, I make sure that when I do all my side hustles, which are, you know, uh, yard selling or taking stuff to a consignment store or selling things on Facebook Marketplace or my digital products that I make or any of these things, and I take all that profit and half of it goes to debt and half of it goes here. Because like, I still have to make sure to remember to keep my, you know, uh, priorities in check and still paying off debt's highest priority. But I really got to say that that not doing these thinking funds is really what got me tripped up before. Well, I would love to hear in the comments below, like what, you know, sinking fund or what category continually sneaks up. And if you didn't have a sinking fund for it, then you would be able to go back into debt. Uh, I'd love to hear about it because I love just hearing the different categories everybody has. I just think it's interesting. We all come from different walks of life and different things happen. So uh, share with me. Maybe I'm missing one and I need to add one. Uh, and hopefully I get some ideas from you as well. Let's go ahead and put that 80 in here. So that leaves us the $920 left over to get to our goal for my house maintenance, reno, disaster, whatever it may be, right? All right. So we're going there. Next up is going to be, I believe, car maintenance. Let's see here. It sure is. This has definitely been probably the worst. Car maintenance is by far the most expensive and to me, most annoying thing for a sinking fund because you have a nice car, you spend the money and get it, save up for it, and then it needs a oil change or the tire pops or who knows, the battery died, the alternator died, on and on and on it goes. And so this is definitely my like arch enemy and I actually had a, quite a bit in here and then beginning of this year I had to empty it because a tire popped and the a battery needed to be changed and I can't remember something else too. So this is my number one priority to keep me from going back into debt. I kept having to put stuff on a credit card in the past and I don't want to do that anymore so I like to be prepared. So I think I'm going to color a bunch here and then we'll go ahead and fill it in and go from there. that's it so we're gonna do one two three four five so it's five and two four six eight ten and then we did so it's 15 we got 15 to 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 for car maintenance we wanted to just try to get some more of that done and definitely get the head on this since we've emptied it so let's go ahead and grab that 50 right here and then we can go ahead and fill this up here we got 617 we put 50 in so we have 950 to go to get to my goal there now of course it would always be better to have more and more and i wish that i did but i think also when you're planning this out you got to be realistic like how much money you have will you be able to do it if you're really low on, on income and and you're anything like me when i started out i could only do really I think I had maybe three categories, uh, if I remember right, car maintenance, and then I'd already done emergency fund, I can't remember what else it was, oh, holidays, and ho yeah, house issues. And I could only put like five in each, but even that helped when those times came and made it so that I was, you know, putting less and less into debt and more and more in that freedom. So you gotta start somewhere. So on that note, I think one of my favorite savings challenges to do um, for on the lower income side or just like that is just super simple and feels gratifying because it's not like this huge thing is definitely roll the dice. Let's go ahead and do this for a minute. Take a break from coloring. Um, you know, I know that not coloring is everybody's cup of tea. It definitely wasn't even my cup of tea when I first started, but I have to say I've gotten used to it and I, because I really love the kind of tactile reminder of where I'm at and it kind of motivates me to keep saving. All right, roll the dice. This is, is for $231 and we're just gonna roll it and color some in. You know, uh, we'll just do a few really quick. Let's see here, we got 
three. So one, two, and three. And let's go ahead and color in, I don't know, let's do this one right here, this three. Okay, nice. We'll just go and roll one more time. Oh, all the way down here. We got what? A two. All right, two more. Let's go here. All right. Okay, let's go one more time. Hoping to get a higher one. Yes, we got a six. That's good. We'll put five and six. Let's grab another color. Yeah, this one's a lot of fun. There's also like lots of games you can play. I do find that some of the games are just a little bit tedious for me. I like things a little more systematic and going towards a goal than that. So, all right, let's see. What do we got left here? Got one, two, three, four. Let's roll one more time and call it a deal. Oh, we got six, so five and six, perfect. Let's color this one right here. So this is like probably the only one that's not uh, for a particular challenge. So what I do with these little ones over here is, one, if an emergency happens and I don't have enough, I would pull from it. Other than that, it would be all going to extra debt payoff because that's where I'm in to get, you know, that's what my goal is, is to become debt free. Once you're debt free, then you're able to do all of this to build your wealth. And re it's really going to, you know, create that freedom and that, and that wealth building that at least I desire so that I can leave that next generation up with really good, um, you know, financial habits. All right, that's all done. Next up is yearly bills. Let's see which savings challenge I have for that one. And I do in a few minutes have some scratchers. We, I do, uh, those are also in within this book. So some savings challenges have scratchers and some don't. So uh, if you're not a colored in kind of person, I'll show you some of those other ones in just a moment. All right, yearly bills. The B I have, I've set to 20 and then each of the honeycombs is a dollar. You can set whatever you have, you know, whatever you're coloring to whatever you desire. That's what I did. So, cause I need a little more than what these were originally set at. So let's go ahead and color in this one right here. Okay, perfect. So 20 for the B and then five for the honeycombs. We got 25 going into yearly bills. And these would be things like subscriptions. Um, gosh, what else have I done? I've also in the past done uh, where you pay for either six months or a year of your, you know, your escrow payments or your insurance, or you could even do, uh, gosh, like a, like car insurance or something like that. And usually you get a deal by paying it all at once. You get like kind of a cut for doing it all at one time. So something to look at, give your, you know, bills a call and say, Hey, if I paid this all at once, what will the price be? And break it down and see how much money you can save. So 25. And it was a thousand dollars we were going for, so we are at nine seventy-five to get to that thousand. All right. Next up, and I think getting close to the end here on these ones, and then we'll get to do the hundred envelope challenge, which I just adore. All right vacation is this one right here, and I think I'm just gonna do like all of one column and see how much money it comes up to because I am going uh, next month on a mission trip to Albania and though I have it pretty much fully funded, I don't want to spend any money on anything uh, that I don't have money accounted for. So let's just do a little bit here uh, so that I can make sure to have a little bit of those spending money for souvenirs and things like that. All right, like I said, I'm just gonna start at the top and then we'll go from there. All 
Okay, so I've said that each of these have a different amount. So it looks like the plane's 30, the bag's 20, the motel or whatever is 25, the vacay vibes is 10, and the plane tickets are 15. So what is that? What are all those together? We got 30 and 25 and 20 and 15 and 10. We got $100. Awesome. Let's go ahead and do that. 20, 40, 60, 80, and 1. Fantastic. And you know, here's a good one too. If you, um, I had someone tell me they've like never gone on vacation because they've never had money for it. What if you started where every time you had did like a savings challenge, you just put a little bit of money in it and then you could t divide it by how long it would take to get to your goal and you just do it. Even if it took you two or three years to get to that trip to go to Disneyland or maybe your dream is Greece or Paris or whatever, price it out, put your goal down and start working towards it because you know what it does is it creates motivation. When I'm doing those side hustles, um, and I'm really tired and I'm like, I don't want to do it anymore. I just need a break. I think about these things. I think about, I want those memories, those goals. I want to go do this, that, or the other. And then it kind of like helps refocus me into where I want to go. And I kind of push through that feeling of wanting to give up and move forward instead. All right. So we got 120 in there. Yeah, so pick that, set the goal amount below, and start working towards it today. It doesn't even matter if it takes a few years. It matters that you start, because if you don't start, you're definitely not gonna get any closer tomorrow, but if you start today, then you're closer than you were yesterday, okay? That's all we can do one step at a time. But I'm definitely excited to go on this trip that I'm going to because I've never been to Albania. It'd be quite a thing for me, I think. Next up is gifts. And I'm just using this birthday one for gifts for anybody because I already have a birthday sinking fund that I do on my every cash stuffing because it's more of a high priority sinking fund for like my family birthdays. These are extended families. And that's why I'm just using the savings challenges for gifts and presents for other people. Okay, this side I set to 20 and this side I set to 10. I think today we'll just do one of each and then we'll move on to the next thing because I don't think I have like a ton of money to go into here. And how I figure out how much money to do is I don't. I don't figure it out. I put the money in front of me and I start from uh, the front and work to the back. Now, if I had one that was a higher priority than another one, then I might start with the most high priority and then work down to lowest priority. Um, but I don't try to like figure out exactly um, because I don't always have the money. I don't always have money for you know savings challenges. I definitely have to work really hard and do lots of side hustles to get to this goal. Uh, it's well worth it, but it does take work. Okay, another 10 here. So saying that, if you're like, I have, I don't know how you get all this money for savings challenges, you can too. Figure out what you're good at. Start investing in yourself by doing those side hustles and those things that you might be good at. If you don't know, even know where to start or what kind of side hustle to do, I did make a video on some of the ones that I've done. I'll put that video up here and maybe you'll find that a little bit helpful. All right. And the amount was $30. So what are we at? 960 70 dollars right ah uh, okay hang on let me wipe this off really quick okay that's what probably my favorite part about the vista prints are is that i can just wipe it off i was using permanent marker um on any of the ones that were glossy but i asked for these in matte honestly because you guys can see them better in my videos but i also just like the way matte looks so it's definitely worth using the Expo Vista ones. Okay, let's go ahead and do, it's 970. Perfect, we'll put that in here. I'm gonna give it a minute to dry because I did like make it all wet and we'll go on to our next one, which is holidays. Let me get there and I can kind of explain this why it's drying. Okay, so 
the the all the this, uh, this savings challenges kind of I use for Valentine's Day and for this treat myself challenge. I'm gonna put all that towards gifts, presents, whatever over there. And then holidays, I'm using all of these. I put them all into a holiday fund. Some people like to do like a different envelope for each one, and you could definitely do that. But really, the only really big holiday that I spend money on is Christmas, and maybe a little bit on Thanksgiving tiny bit of money goes towards Easter, Halloween, those kind of things, but not much. So I kind of just take whatever, put it in the holiday, what's left over usually will probably go to Christmas. So I finished the Easter one already. I'm not going to start this one because we're not quite ready for it. Uh, Thanksgiving, I'll do that uh, when I finish the other ones and Christmas. And then we went ahead and did spring. I should probably finish up that one and then we can go ahead and do summer as well. Let's see. Yeah, let's finish. Do I want to finish spring or? You know what? I'm going to come back to spring. I know it's not spring anymore, but I'm going to come back to spring because, you know, 4th of July is around the corner and I just really want to finish the summer one. I'm going to use all this money and throw it towards um, some fireworks for the kiddos. So, because we can do that here where I live. So much fun. Get all the neighborhood together and do that. So, let's close in really quick. Awesome. So we have a 10, 20, 25, and $30 we're going to put. But I'm not done with holidays, so I'm going to wait for a minute to do the tracker. Because next, I really want to do this scratcher one. I just kind of find it fun. So let's go ahead and just scratch a few of them and see how much money we will have under here. If you can see, there is $300 is the goal, and I'm done. It's kind of glossy. 20, 25, and another 20. So 45 so far. Oh, here another 15 too. All right, let's go ahead and scratch this and see where we're at. Nice, 25. Okay, I think that's it. That's good for this one for this time. So let's see what we have total for the holiday fund. All right, we got 20, 40, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85 dollars into this holiday fund. And we had a little bit in there already. And if you can see, I have a prop money. This means that $200 is in my wealth front account. So I do want to give a little caveat. If you've been to this far, first of all, thank you for watching. Please tell me what kind of savings challenges you like, or if you want to see a different one on here and I will maybe get it and share it with you. Um, but, uh, if you have more than 100 or 200 dollars you need to do a cash condensing where you take your money change it into prop money so you know how much is in there and then put it into a high yield savings account one fires happen people lose their money it's terrible even safes uh that are like low grade fireproof usually won't save your money um there is some that are like a little higher quality that do keep your money safe and i will link the one that i have liked below, but it's not 100% still. 100% is in somewhere else at like a high yield savings account where it's insured and protected. And that's what I would suggest. And I will link that below. Anyway, that's what that means. That's that prop money there. Let's go ahead and see. Again, I can't remember what I just said here. I said 20, 40, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85. Okay, so we got 617 and we have $85. So let's see, 17. 10 minus 85 is 1625. Now uh, that is it for this savings challenge book. Okay. Now we're going to move into my hundred envelope challenge. And I don't know if you've ever done it before, 
but I absolutely love the 100 envelope challenge. You can do them at uh, 5,000, you can do them at 10,000, uh, and there's even like a 52 uh, envelope challenge if you want to do like a smaller, uh, little, you know, easy, I don't know, I guess more quickly to be obtained, right? Because this definitely has taken a long time. I have worked on this since last year because I just don't have a terribly lot of money to put towards it. So that's definitely something to think about <laughs> when getting one. You know, sometimes it's nice to set your goals a little bit on the lower side so that you get kind of that gratification as you go. But there is something that I do a little different than some other people when it comes to their 100 envelope. A lot of people will keep all their money in here. And again, like you heard what I just said, I don't think it's very safe to do that. So I do, I keep a little bit in here until it builds up and then I'm gonna take that to my high yield savings account. So the ones that I have already done are back here. And after I get like two or three and when I do a cash condensing, I take that to the bank. And what I do is then I go ahead and I put a prop money in its place, okay? So they got all these different prop monies here. Let me show you. Like here's the first one today. Let's say I filled this one. I can go ahead and take that money out, take it to the bank and put this prop money in and put it in here. Now I know this is in my high yield savings account and because it has that prop money and I can still see it. I don't know, it's kind of hard to see. I can still see it. Let's see here. Uh, when I'm looking at it out of view. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it absolutely makes it really nice. I really have enjoyed doing it this way because I still want that gratification of looking and going, look at all those are filled. That is motivating to me. But let's go ahead and fill up a couple for today. I'm gonna put this back in the front. We're not quite needing it yet. First one was that $8 that I showed you. So five, six, seven, eight. Well, that worked out nice. I wasn't sure if I was gonna have enough ones because I used them all for that dice challenge. And they just get higher and higher. Now, if you're doing that five, thousand um envelope challenge you're just literally getting a hundred envelopes and you write one to a hundred on the hundred envelopes and you have five thousand and i think and but if you do a ten thousand you're skipping numbers so you're doing two four six eight and so on all the way to 200 so the amounts can get a lot larger so like at the end of this you're going all the way up to like 198, 200. So it's a, it's a lot more that way. All right, so 46, let's go ahead and do 20, 40, uh, we have 45, so we round up, we'll do 50. And I always do try to round up if I can because then a little bit extra over, well, that never hurts, all right? Okay. Then again, I will empty these and put prop money in their place when it comes to cash condensing. Let's see if we can do one more. Nope, we're gonna be a little bit short. So what I do when I'm a little bit short is I take it all, so I have 35, almost, and I go ahead and I fill it in there, and then I put it in the front. So next time when I go to do the 100 envelope challenge, I will grab this and fill it up the rest of the way and then put it in the back and keep going. This is especially the way I do it when it's really large, like you know, 198, 150. I don't usually always have that much to do it with. So I'll kind of do it in this order um, to, to make it so that I can keep going on and, and actually being able to do it. So yeah, they're definitely fun. If you haven't had one yet, I will link a few of my favorites below. I don't know where this exact one is, but um, I know of a few good ones and a few different Etsy people that I think are really good and I'll link below in this prop money. The only person I know that makes the prop money is FWM Creations by Chris. Um, and I will link her below as well. But that is it for all the savings challenges today. Thank you so much for joining me and doing them along with me. I hope you found some that sounded fun. I hope you got some ideas for your sinking funds so that you can get to your goals a little more quickly. And as always, I want you to please, please find joy in your journey. And I'll leave a really good video right here about reverse grocery shopping so you can save money and start doing those savings challenges right away.